Hello, this is John Reddy from the Echo Foundation in Charlotte, North Carolina. And today we'll be having a conversation with Mr. Griffith. So Mr. Griffith, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I am a person who lived in Davidson back in the 1980s as vice president of Davidson College. And then went off to be a college president at two different institutions, one in Arkansas and one in South Carolina. And then my wife and I retired back to Davidson in 2015. And then last July, we moved into the Pines. What do you like about living in a community like the Pines? Well, what we, um, we've been here just a short period of time, not quite a year. And we already knew lots of the people here because they were people that were our close friends when we lived here in the 80s. And the people that are here are absolutely amazing. So that's another strength. And then they're really good activities and good food. So obviously you really like the Pines. What was your daily routine? What did it look like prior to COVID-19? Well, prior to COVID-19, there was really no difference than what it was when we lived in St. Albans. The only difference is, is that our package deal includes our food. But there's a really cool dining center and we would, it was sort of like uh, going out to eat uh, four times a week with friends in St. Albans. Yeah. Um, but we didn't have to pay for it. I mean, we are paying for it, but it was as opposed to shopping for groceries. Yeah. Um, it was part of the daily routine. So that was really, only, that was really the only difference. Yeah. Obviously there has been change though due to this virus. So tell me about some of the rules that are now being put in place as a result of the virus. Well, things started changing rapidly in mid-March. Yeah. And accelerated to sort of a full shutdown where we are not allowed to leave campus. Um, and if you do have to leave campus for emergencies, like uh, say you have cancer and you need to have cancer treatment, yeah. uh, radiation or something like that, when you go off, you're quarantined for, for 14 days. Yeah. A quarantine doesn't mean you, you're stuck in your room or your cottage or your villa. It means that when you go out, you have to wear a mask and you have to be at least 10 feet away from people yeah. as opposed to the six feet away without a mask for those people that aren't in quarantine. Yeah. So, um, and then another change is that the dining center is closed. So food is delivered. We order our food the night before and it's, or and it's delivered to our door. We, we can't go to, um, if we want to get some food at Harris Teeter or Publix or have to get medicine, we can order online and then the Pines goes, picks it up and brings it to us. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. And then I think one of the harder things is that all of the recreational aspects, the pool, um, all those things uh, were closed. Yeah. But they moved the yoga, Tai Chi. Um, I, I can't tell you the number of Zoom things that, yeah. <laughs> that, that we do and all that. So it has changed. We're there now. Yeah. So what does it feel like now? All, all these changes? Well, I, uh, a couple of things. One is that I, I now walk eight miles a day. Wow. That's awesome. And it used to be three miles a day. Unfortunately, this is a 160 acre campus, so there are good places to walk. One of the things that is really impressive, John, is to see people out walking for whom that is a new, new activity. We are a community of street people. <laughs> we're, we're out there walking, and some people have to have the masks on because they're in quarantine, so you see people walking with masks. Um, 
I would say the conversations are at the point now where people are a little bit sick of the shutdown. Mm -hmm. They're beginning to talk about, let's go someplace. This week, the Pines announced they're going to be taking bus tours of the countryside. Only seven people on a bus with social distancing. You know? Yeah. So are there any specific positive outcomes? You've talked a little bit about that, but do you have any specific ones? Oh, the walking. A second thing, um, <laughs> we've been holding uh, lots of, we call them six feet apart parties. Yeah. We have a really great backyard at our facility where, where our, we, we're in a cottage and we have a great mm. backyard. And we've probably had, I don't know, 20 gatherings. Wow. Bart, now couples can sit together, but then the yeah. next couple has to be, and if it's a single person, you know. And we did a Cinco de Mayo party. Mm. And what's been good for us, we were sort of, in this routine of interacting with the people we already knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we've now added to that a whole bunch of additional people. And that's, that's good. Yeah. So you're kind of building out your community, you know, at the that's a good line. Good phrase. Yeah. Yeah. So going from positive now, have you seen any negative impacts, you know, specific ones for you at least? Well, I think some people have, uh, depressing days yeah because they would like to see their grandson probably had two days where I just thought oh, oh gosh you know I just, it just felt like inside it just didn't feel good yeah and our son in New Hampshire is a psychiatrist and he's he's seeing lots of people who are having depression as a result of this uh, close down yeah and and I think I would be I would be surprised if that wasn't something that was occurring here. Yeah. Um, do you feel safe or and do you worry about anything from the coronavirus? Well, my wife and I do feel safe here. And we feel that we're very fortunate to have been here. Or to be here. Um, we know that people in our age group, people over 65, are the folks that have the hardest time, if they get it, surviving. We're going to be cautious, I think, for a while. I think you'll see that with many other people. I know that our, our two boys, and they, they're a total of seven, uh, five grandchildren, um, they've just been very, very careful with their families. And it's, I think it's good to see that. So... Speaking about family, how have you kept in contact with family and friends too? Okay, well, first of all, every morning, Monday through Friday from nine to 10, Nancy and I do um, a Zoom, we call it Gaga and Papa University with the four and seven year old. And I do art lessons for them and they wow. create great images so that's what we're doing with grandkids wow, and then awesome. every other week with our whole family we do an hour-long zoom which is kind of crazy because it's it usually ends up being just the, our sons and their wives and nancy and me because the kids after half an hour are bored and they're off running and screaming and you know all that um, and then um, with people, other people outside, like we either do FaceTime or Zoom with them. I think a new normal is this type, what we're doing right now. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it's a crazy time. So as a former president of a college, what do you think, what do you think are some changes that, are, you, that you're going to see in college in the upcoming months and years? Well, I think first of all, um, you've got now a student body, student bodies that are trained with online learning. Number two, um, you're seeing, you're going to see residence halls restructured, at least temporarily, so that people aren't in the same room together. Dining centers, in terms of their hours and how close people can sit and how food is served, 
And the whole athletic thing is going to be very interesting um, to see if contact sports um, are going to be able to take place. So do you think with these changes, do you see them, some of them becoming permanent, you know, for years and years to come? Is that I think we will see a permanent intensification of online learning. What's going on right now with COVID-19 and, you know, how colleges are reacting to it and maybe w how you um, feel about that and what you may do. First of all, let me tell you, I have a consulting company and we do consulting work with institutions of higher learning. You know, all the fall sports, even winter sports. So there's a whole bunch of rethinking going on about how the academy is going to be structured in the months and maybe even years ahead. There may be a new normal. And what's so interesting right now is how much the universe is changing. As you know, kids have been sent home like in public schools uh, to online learning. Uh, the whole notion of the residential college is a place where you learn citizenship and develop sort of lifelong friends. All those things are, are right now on hold. There's that, that definitely is the future. So it's been awesome talking to you. We've had a great conversation and yeah, thank you. Thank you, John. The Echo Foundation was created by Nobel Peace Laureate Ellie Wiesel and family therapist Stephanie Ansado to promote justice, tolerance, and humanity at home and abroad. Based in Charlotte, North Carolina, Echo enlists notable humanitarians to inspire the next generation of humanitarians through student-led initiatives. For more information about the Echo Foundation, visit www.echofoundation.org or follow our Facebook and Instagram pages.